right, y'all, welcome back. My name's Chad, and this is Ted to the Rossa Farms. Today, we're just gonna do a little walk around. We've got the chicken drawers taken care of first thing this morning, and we're just gonna do a walk around of the property here and kind of show you what we've been up to. It's late May. Spring is in full swing right now. We've got lots of things growing on and lots of plans coming up here in the future. So we're just gonna do a little walk around here, kind of show you what we've been up to chip drop pile been working our way through it putting mulch around the garden and stuff got the uh, little mini mobile coop put together here talk about that probably in the next video we got plans for that thing coming up so here's the here's the driveway and everything so the biggest additions that we've put in are all these Trello, oh, I gotta go back over here. I forgot to show you Maggie's amaranth that she's growing. It's coming up real well. In this cool pot here. This is uh, this is amaranth, and the type is called Love's Li Love Lies Bleeding. It's a really dark red, deep red color amaranth. And amaranth can be used as a alternative grain to regular wheat or anything like that. You can grind it up and make flour out of it and things. We're just growing it for the beauty of it. And the chickens will eat it. They like they like amaranth seed. So probably feed most of it to them. But anyway, going back over here now. We got these four We got four arch trellises here with different uh, winter squashes and things on them the first arch here is delicata squash so we got delicata we got acorn squash spaghetti squash honey nut squash and butternut squash all on these four arches over here these are pretty similar to the ones that we grew gourds on last year um, except they're single panel and there's four of them so it's actually twice as big Plus, we got a bonus. Let me see if I can get this whole thing in the frame. We got a bonus arch trellis right here that we put together off of uh, off an old trampoline frame that we got for free off Craigslist. So we built a big arch with it. All we had to do was add some PVC pipe and, uh, and some. I don't know. It's like three foot three foot roll fencing, just so there's the plants have something to. To grow on and this is going to be our this year's crop of birdhouse gourds we're going to be on this trellis here and then we got a couple of these pots out here one here one over on the other side those are growing dill so one thing i was missing last year when we were when we were uh, growing cucumbers and making pickles and things was the dill that we planted last year never came up it never it was a it was a soil issue. We tried to grow it in just straight mushroom compost, and if if any of y'all know about mushroom compost, you know that's not going to work. So, um, and it didn't work for us. This year, though, there's definitely dill coming up in both these pots. So, hopefully, we get a better a better dill harvest this year. Or I'm better if if I get one piece of dill, it would be better. But um, so there's that stuff over here the house and now on this side we got this tilled up we got three different kind of pumpkins that we're growing here we got big max which is those giant huge pumpkins we'll see if we get a big pumpkin out of it we might just get a standard size pumpkin we might not get a pumpkin at all I'm not really sure as a first year that uh hopefully we successfully grow these we didn't we were not successful last year but i think it was a lighting issue so right next to the pumpkin patch, we have these two, two cool little spires here that I found at the dump when I was taking trash one day. And I was like, man, those would be pretty cool to grow something on. So these are gonna be um, climbing nasturtium. And also on these trellises, there's gonna be a climbing nasturtium mixed in with everything over there. So climbing nasturtium is a edible flower. You can eat the leaves, the flower, Pretty much the entire plant but it also helps fight off um, cucumber and squash beetles so hopefully we don't get big uh, a big beetle infestation like we did last year 
so yeah watermelon or not watermelon <laughs> man i'm really it's pretty early right now i just got up um i just wanted to get out here and shoot this video before we really started getting up more things going on here but pumpkins nasturtium on that side so we're gonna walk back over this way some more and over here is a burn barrel i burned out another black walnut stump yesterday probably gonna move on i got one over here off of this old flower patch there's another black walnut stump over there and then i've got the two that are holding up the firewood back here so on this side there's another arch trellis these are cucamelons also known as a mexican sour gherkin so what these are is they're little itty bitty cucumbers they're small little cucumbers they look just like a watermelon but they have a like a pineapple like a mix between like a pineapple and a cucumber flavor to them from what i understand i've never tasted them i've never grown them this is our first year doing it i really hope it's successful because they're supposed to be pretty prolific plants good little snacking cucumber just to when we're out here working we just grab a couple off the off the vine here and and uh munch on them so here's the garden it's doing really well got a lot going on in here right now onions are still around the outside got some mulch down on them and got some other shallots and onions and chives and other things planted out here too hopefully there's enough time left in the season for them to get up and get going but uh we'll go walk around in the garden a little bit and i'm not gonna show you a whole bunch because a lot of the plants are pretty small still our starts didn't do super well this year because we just started them on the porch and uh and they didn't quite get enough of everything they needed we got the hummingbird feeders back out we actually and we got a new one on the other side of the yard i didn't show it to you but it's pretty cool shaped like a mushroom and then check out this cool little wind chime <laughs> pretty cool little wind chime that maggie found on amazon his eyes light up solar powered i came out here last night i was watching the hockey game i was watching the canes get spanked again so uh watching the hockey game last night I came out here forgot to put the chickens away so i came out after dark to close them up and his little light little eyeballs were lit up it's pretty cool so it's just gonna be a kind of a quick overview here of the garden i'm gonna kind of just point at different stuff because like i said i can't really show you every single plant because some of them are only this tall still um along the edge here we got four san marzano tomatoes with uh different mixes of calendula and sunflower and and um and marigolds and things scattered through here there's going to be the whole border around here is going to be a lot of flowers just to, both to draw pollinators and to deter other pest animals from the garden this closest plot to me right here and this plot over here is mostly peppers there's another arch trellis here that's got malabar spinach growing off of it it's a tropical a tropical type of spinach that grows well in hot weather because if you've ever tried to grow spinach as soon as the summer comes around it bolts it just it, it seeds out and it just it, it's really bitter it, it just doesn't do well in the hot this is supposed to thrive in the heat so and underneath the trellis over there there's a bunch of different lettuce plants that we transplanted from a different bed over here that was getting overrun by grass and they're uh they're starting to get pretty good size man we had a really huge salad yesterday for lunch and it was so great to finally have a really big salad again i've i've, I've missed vegetable season Spring's also here. You can tell the motorcycles and everything are driving by here, and it's just it is really loud. So I apologize if you can't hear me. Hopefully this new microphone's working out well. But um, on this trellis here, we have different kinds of we have three different kinds of cucumbers growing here. We have this one. It's called a lemon OG. It's supposed to be a yellow round cucumber, and then we've got a a. Uh, a type called Katrina. It's a, it's actually a greenhouse grown cucumber and I'm gonna try and grow it outside and see how it does. And then we got our same pickling cucumbers we grew last year. They're called Cool Customer from Johnny Seeds. They're a, they're a pretty good, pretty hearty little, little pickle. I'm still eating pickles from last year and they're still really crunchy. It's been really awesome. This trellis here is our snacking tomatoes. There's sun gold tomatoes in here there's these little mini cherry tomatoes it's the world's smallest cherry tomato it's like a really small little currant berry that comes on them never had them figured i might as well try and grow them 
We got green zebra in here. Those are not cherry tomato, but they're not also a slicing tomato either. They're a green and, and orange colored tomato when they uh, when they ripen. And then we got blue cream. I think they're called blue cream cherry tomatoes too. We grew these last year. They started to come on a little bit in the pots we had up here, but I think the deer were nipping on them <coughs> and ate most of them. So this row is our slicing tomatoes. We've got Jubilee. Black cream. And yellow brandy wine. <laughs> I had to look at the tag. I couldn't remember the other one. Um, so these are all of our slicing tomatoes on this trellis. So we're going we're gonna to have a lot of tomatoes going on, but tomato season is my favorite season. So a little more overview here. Look at these sunflowers coming up here. Aren't they pretty? They're going to be big and hopefully, hopefully bloom out nice and huge. And then Maggie's been out here putting in a bunch of work. Well, she's been out here putting a bunch of work on all this stuff. She's been doing most of the garden out here, which I appreciate. She's got quite the green thumb these days. Pretty happy about that because I like to eat, you know. And if you ever, if you're trying to find salad in a grocery store right now, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't good. Okay, I'll just we'll leave it there. This is our Marshall Romaine. These four here that we got from our CSA early in the season. They're doing really well. We're probably gonna grow this every single year from now on. I really like this lettuce. It's really crunchy. <laughs> one, of the chickens, one of the chickens just laid an egg and Jake's over there cheering her on. But I got a sidetrack there. So next to that, these are all breakfast radishes. We've found a new way to make bref breakfast radishes where you roast them just like a potato and they kind of taste like a potato, almost like potato and onions. So the bite, the hard bite from the radish is almost taken completely away. It's, it's amazing. We have a whole basket of them that she pulled yesterday that I, I feel like we're probably having for dinner with dinner tonight, but I'm a fan of it. I don't mind. Here's our couple lone strawberries in this patch here. Our uh, strawberry crowns we planted, planted, I think we did six and, and it appears only two of them, it appears that only two of them are doing well. So I have no idea what happened or why it happened because they were all planted the same way at the same time. We'll just wait for them to grow up and spread a little more. And then we'll plant some more around. Some more spinach and different lettuces. And this patch over here has, these are eggplant on this side. And then down here are our summer squashes. We have zucchini and yellow crookneck and they're they're struggling right now from transplant shock. These plants we started in those trays on the porch and uh, they're putting on new growth. They're just kind of yellow. They're 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 really suffering, but I don't think it's got anything to do with the soil because I also have a volunteer right here that I believe is cantaloupe and the only way that could have happened that a volunteer cantaloupe would be coming up in this garden is in the summer when it's hot we feed cold cantaloupe to the chickens and uh and it helps keep their keep their uh core temperature down so so the only thing i can think of is this got mixed in with the compost that was from the chicken run and then we use that compost on the garden these seeds popped up in here there's a couple of them throughout the garden that have come up in just random spots um, trying to get an angle so my shadow is not covering everything but the sun's not blazing in your face either so we got some red beets down here that bed's about empty there it was trying to grow cabbage I think and it just never did anything and the carrots are pretty sporadic over here but check out these check out these brassicas these things are starting to get crazy the kale back there is doing really well Gonna, we're gonna hang on to these as long as we possibly can. We've also been cutting some of the leaves. Well, I guess off of the cabbage and stuff, but anyway, we'll get to that in a sec. So on this side, we've got some more carrots and kale and chard. And on the panel trellis back there is, it, we were, we started sweet peas back there and uh, only like one came up of the whole trellis. And uh, 
So we just went ahead and stripped those out and we planted, went ahead and planted our summer green beans there. We're doing asparagus yard long beans this year. They say they're best to harvest when they're under 18 inches. So that's from the crook of my elbow to my fingertips. Be pretty cool to see really long green beans growing off of here. And then here's some more of those brassicas that we got from our CSA doing really well. Asian cabbage and kohlrabis and all kind of stuff going on over here. The bag on that trellis that's actually growing, those are our sweet peas that didn't make on this one. They're growing on this one, so we do have peas still growing here. I hope they get up and get mature before, before the heat really sets in. But, so that's the garden in a nutshell. Like I said, it's just gonna be kind of a quick, not really quick at all, I guess. And already getting pretty long into this video and try and finish up this walkthrough here, but. So we put the chickens, they're up on the top hill now. We kind of rotate them around the yard so they don't beat up the grass too much. And check it out, we put some of that wood chip mulch. Put some of that wood chip mulch up there around the house. That's a walking path that we can actually come down off the, what we call the high road. Um, we came out here and dumped about six or seven mower trailer loads of wood chips out here and really beefed it up. It looks really good. The chickens like the other side because they they can crawl all over the other side of the hill now. They've been cutting out little holes and making them making themselves a little home over here. I mean, it is their home, but they've been they've been enjoying it. They've also liked this really shady spot over here too. They'll lay over there in the midday when the sun's still on this side and just kind of chill out. The old lettuce patches starting to get overgrown a little bit when we move the chickens next time we're going to get them down and get them on that back on that patch and they'll tear that apart the old original chicken coop over here i did some did some repair work on it and then i moved it out here and then found out i still needed to do a little bit more repair work on it so it's just kind of hanging out here it's going to be our little hospital coop whenever we have a sick chicken we can just put that inside the yard with the other ones so they'll be separate but not together that makes any sense you know they won't be able to get to each other and then back here is the leave it alone patch this year and by that I mean we're gonna plant it and just leave it alone we'll monitor it with water and maybe fertilize as needed but it uh, it's not gonna need a whole lot because out here is where we're growing we'll start on the <coughs> Excuse me. I start on the far inside here. Now what happened is we planted tiller radish in here as a cover crop for the early spring and then we tilled it in. So after we tilled it in though, there was a bunch of seed that was still sitting on the surface that didn't germinate or anything that was just sitting there. And uh, when, we <laughs> when we tilled it in, it started germinating. So that's a lot of what you're seeing in here is just some tiller radish and a lot of it we're just gonna leave because I don't think it'll hurt anything that we're growing in here and it'll just still help improve the soil a little bit. Unless stuff starts getting in the way, then we'll start pulling it out. Plus we feed it to the chickens, they love it. So this section back here is, you can see there's some tiller radish, but there's also a lot of corn growing in here. This is our sweet corn patch for this year. We're growing country gentlemen again. And then we got another hybrid sweet corn that we're growing in here too. I can't remember the name of it right now off the top of my head. But so this is our corn section here and we're going to do a three strand electric fence around. We'll probably just do it around the whole patch. Maybe I'm not sure yet, but we're gonna do a three strand electric fence around here to, uh, to keep the raccoons out this year. Once the, um, once the corn starts silking, start putting that sweet smell in the air. The raccoons, it's like their dinner bell. They can smell it from a long ways away and they'll come and eat it all up. So through the middle here though, we got watermelons and uh, somebody that doesn't know how to fix an exhaust on their vehicle driving by right now. So sorry about that. And just like that, it's over. Um, so through here, we got, through here we got watermelons growing and 
most of those have come up probably i'd say probably 95 percent of them there's only a couple of empty spots that will just drop a couple of shove a couple seeds in the ground just to fill in this whole section here this whole section right here is going to be our sweet potatoes and right there we have one i can't remember what it's called it's like a midnight black or something it's a start that we had picked up over at the farm connection of a different sweet potato it's a it's got a purple top on it so we just shoved it here in the middle and then we're going to do our regular probably do Beauregard this year I'm not sure we're supposed to get some sweet potato slips on the CSA whatever they give us it's probably not going to be a whole bunch but whatever they give us we'll just buy we'll just buy some extras of it and plant those in here so this should be covered with sweet potato vines before long but that one that one I don't know if you can even see it it's right there it's purple um, there's a there's a critter that really likes these leaves it's been back here gnawing on them a little bit they ate about half the leaves off of it so um, we'll probably have to try and figure out what that is we had that problem last year because we grew them I mean it's a mess now but we grew them all over and through here last year and like a third of the patch got munched on really bad like the plants would just be up and they would just look like sticks but then on the other side of the patch it was just a big lush ground cover so I don't know what it is I think it's deer but I can't quite see any tracks and I'd be able to see it back here because we tilled this ground so it's soft so I'm not sure if it's a rabbit or what it is but something's definitely back there eating it and then this section here in the front we got three rows going side to side here of uh, purple tomatillos green tomatillos and then we planted ground cherries in the front We've never grown ground cherries before, but that's supposed to be another like snacking current that you can just come out and grab them there. It's just like a tomatillo, but it's smaller. It's a husk tomato. Um, we're growing those back here. And then uh, we'll walk around over the top here and finish out this video, but got a few cool things over here I want to really show you guys. Check out the chickens there. Like I said earlier, they just like, they just like hanging out out here on the side of the on the side of the house they really enjoy it but check this out so if you've been following us for a little while you know we got a septic redone last early spring and when they put in the drain field up here oh, almost gave you a little peek when they put in the drain field up here they um had to excavate the whole thing out and it was just all dirt and it's a kind of a steep hill so we needed to plant some ground cover on it so we went up there with a bunch of different wildflower seeds and things and uh and they came up pretty well last year they didn't really start coming up much until the summer but now the early spring stuff is is coming in and check this out it's really filling in nice up there I'm really happy with with how this is turning out and then as the season goes on these yellow daisies or whatever they are i'm not even 100 certain what they are but they'll just they'll fade away and then the cosmos will come and lots of different flowers and things so this is exciting this is going to be one of our little meadow living meadows and and uh you guys probably can't see it because this isn't the greatest camera for it but there are butterflies and bees everywhere up here but another thing i want to show you was potatoes check these out so Last year we tried to grow potatoes in pots just like this and they didn't do well at all and it was another one of those things where I grew them in mushroom compost. Um, mushroom compost is a great soil additive to help improve clay soil, improve, put some more humus in the ground and, and, and things like that but it's, it doesn't have a lot of nutritional value so it doesn't have enough food in it to support the plants that are growing in it. So this is a mix of composted cow manure and potting soil, 50-50, that we're growing in this year. And they are doing a thousand percent better than they were last year. I'm really excited about this. Um, I like potatoes a lot, so growing them myself works out great. But anyway, we'll give you another swinging overview here of everything. Uh, that's what we've been up to so I want to thank y'all for following us along on this journey and uh, if you got any questions comments or anything leave them in the 
in the box down below give us a thumbs up subscribe share us with your friends all that good stuff but um anyway i'm gonna jump off of here i got some things i need to take care of today and uh and we'll we'll catch up with you all pretty soon have a good one